What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy, Dan from Daft Previews, and I'm here to give you the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview for the Boston Celtics versus the Indiana Pacers Game 3. Now, if it's your first time checking out the channel, I encourage you to subscribe because I do this every single day. I share my screen. We go through outline. We go through all the players. We talk about their matchups, their form lines, the odds. We talk about fantasy, the things I like, the things that I don't, and I do all this to give you all the information that you need to make the best bets possible. So in yesterday's video, we previewed the Dallas Mavericks versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. Had a lot of leans in that game, and a lot of them pretty much spot on. Derek Lively had the game that we expected. Kyrie covered his rebounds. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns went under his boards. Carl Anderson went over his points. Nas Reed went over his points. Daniel Gafford went over his points and rebounds. Luca went over his points. A lot of strong leans in there. I wasn't perfect. Made a lot of mistakes. And personally, I ran a lot of parlays, which is the dumbest thing you could do. If I was running singles, would have made mad banks. So we're going to go back to keeping it simple. We're going to preview this Celtics game, run a lot of single bets. Let's go. So before we jump into outline, I just want to do a quick ease. Have a look at the last Celtics Pacers game to see who performed how, and to try to predict how's the other team going to respond. So Boston won 126 to 110. So they covered their line with ease. Looking at these paces, though, what do we see? Pascal Siakam was great. Two games in a row, 28 points. Did go under his rebounds and assists, though. Miles Turner, quiet game from him with only eight points and four rebounds. Andrew Nemhard was great once again. He covered his assist line and his points line. Tyrese Halliburton, 10 points, eight assists, picked up an injury. So we'll see what his status is for this one. Obi Toppin, 11 points off the bench, covering his line once again. TJ McConnell had nine points and three assists. He had a great start, but he did eventually slow up in that one. Ben Shepard covered his PRA as well. Extra minutes given the blowout. And for the Boston Celtics, we saw Jalen Brown had 40 points in that game. 27 attempts, which is wild. Jason Tatum had 23 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists. Al Horford, 6 points, but he did have 10 rebounds. Derek White finally got cooking. 23 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists. Drew Holiday had 15 points and 10 assists. Peyton Pritchard had 12 points off the bench. Luke Cornett did get injured in that last game too. So we'll check to see what his status is. Now, this is the first game being played at Indiana. Boston are up 2-0. Indiana, if they were completely healthy, probably lean on it being a close game. But Halliburton, question marks on him. But if we're just going to talk about how teams are going to respond here. So Pascal Siakam has been their best scorer for the Pacers. So the Celtics, I question whether they're going to implore something to try to slow him down. Miles Turner, he's a lot better than eight points. Back at home, we could see a bounce back there. Nemhard, he's one of those players who's very consistent. I think his assist could be a good look, depending on what the line is, given Halliburton's status. And you have their bench guys. The bench guys at home, you should see a strong performance out of Obi and TJ McConnell. Looking at these Boston Celtics, now this is a very difficult read because they are deep and anyone can give you 20 on every, any given night. Jalen Brown just scored 40. I imagine his point sign is going to be sky high. I imagine my initial lean is going to be to look at the under, right? Jason Tatum, his points line may not move too much, to be honest. Um, but I don't ultimately love betting on Jason Tatum props anyway. But we will take a look at his rebounds, see where that's at. Al Horford, well, the under in his PRA might be on again because he did go under his PRA in that last game. Derek White, I couldn't tell you what to, what, what to do with him. Maybe his assist, that could be a good look. And Drew Holiday, he's been balling out of control at the moment. Peyton Pritchard off the bench, always a good look. So let's jump into it. Straight back into Outlier. If you did not know, Outlier, it's not just for the NBA, MLB, NHL, WNBA, and all the football when that's on, you can use Outlier for. If you're interested in checking this out, I've got a seven-day free trial in the video link below. Check it out, learn how to use it, and you can make your own winning bets. Now let's jump into this game. We'll start with the Boston Celtics. They are on the road in this one. So let's go with Jason Tatum first. Jason Tatum, the under his two and a half three point line, he's been cashing like crazy. He can't shoot to save his life at the moment. So, man, you can get the under for Jason Tatum at plus money. And every time I look at it, I think, man, this ship has sailed. He's going to start to bounce back soon. And he doesn't. Uh, if you look at his last 20 games, the under has hit in 16 out of his last 20 games from three. He's shooting 29% from the field. He's taking 6.8 attempts per game, but his percentages are awful. Uh, what I'm interested to see is what does his last 10 road games look like? Last 10 games on the road, 
Uh, seven of his last ten have gone under. So every road game he's played in the playoffs has got he's gone under two point five three pointers. So yeah, look, be crazy enough to play it. And if today's the day I finally take Jason Tatum's under in his three point line, and he cashes it, then so be it. But the only reason I'm, I'd be looking at that, Indiana defends a three very well, and Tatum can't shift for shit. But they're my only arguments. Uh, if you agree with that and you want to take the bet, go for it. I'll really leave it up to you. But let's check out his points line. 29.5 for Jason Tatum. He's covered this in three out of his last 10, which is not great. But against the Indiana Pacers, prior to that last game, he covered it in eight straight games. Uh, 23 for that last game. One from seven from three. He still took 20 shots. He was nine from 20 from the field, but he didn't get to the free throw line too much. And a lot of this is partly due to Jalen Brown going off. If Jalen Brown wasn't killing, Jason Tatum would have taken more shots, I'm sure of it. But I wouldn't be brave enough to back the under in his points prop. He can get to the line. He can get to the rim. At 29.5, I wouldn't back the over either. But caution, be be careful if you're looking to back some unders on Jason Tatum because the volume is going to be wild. His assist lines at 5.5. He's gone under in both games so far in this series. Four and five assists for Jason Tatum. Uh, pri- overall, for his last nine games against the Pacers, he's covered this. If we look at his potential assist numbers, though, eight and seven potential assists for Jason Tatum. So this is definitely one where I would lean to the under. Um, if you're going to get eight and seven potential assists and you need him to get six assists, um, uh, that's going to be a tough ask. The Pacers, they don't allow too many assists. Um, but do allow a lot of points. So there's the risk that Tatum's usage rate is going to be sky high, but he's not necessarily looking to pass that ball much, very, very much at all. And the Pacers are happy playing him in single coverage. So the under Jason Tatum's assists, I don't mind that either. So I'm putting that on my list of leans. Rebounds to Tatum, 12 and 6 so far in this series. Uh, if we look at his potential rebounds, his rebound chances, he had 12 in that last game, 15 in the game prior. Uh, I think if you back Jason Tatum's over in his rebounds in every game of this series, you'll probably make profit out of it. Predicting when he's going to get those boards, though, yeah, I'm a little bit unsure about that. If it means anything to you, he's played the Indiana Pacers on the road three times, and he's covered this rebound line in all three. 12, 12, and 13. Looking at his last 10 games on the road, he's covered in five of his last 10. But all four of his road games in the playoffs, He's gone over this rebound line. If that means anything to you, then go for it. Take it. It's great money at the moment, plus 126. So real plus money for Jason Tatum to get those boards. My only concern with this at the moment, in this series, his rebound chances haven't been that high. So that's only that's my only reservation, but I'll leave it up to you to make that call. Let's take a look at Jalen Brown. So Jalen Brown's points lines at 26.5 despite scoring 40 points in that last game. So in the last two, we scored 26 and 40 points against the Pacers. Against the Pacers, historically, six out of his last 10 games, he's covered this. If you just want to look at his games on the road, you can see that he's covered this in four straight games against them. 30, 30, 31, and 40 points. So, yeah, look, Jalen's been going off. And look, I honestly have to lean to the over here for Jalen Brown. I just don't know if I'm man enough to bet it. A bit hesitant to take that, um, but we get points from somewhere. But Jalen Brown could be a good parlay piece if you want to take reduced and alternate lines. I'm just getting my sports book up now to see what would it be like if I took Tatum for 25, yeah, Tatum for 25 and Brown for 20. That's almost that's not, not a lock actually. So because who knows if how bad Tatum's going to shoot. So if we're talking straight bets here, I'm leaning to the over for Jalen Brown. I just don't like betting the overs for players who have just scored 40 points. Like there's an aggression that's likely to occur, but all the historical numbers say that Jalen Brown can come out and kill these dudes. So my concern is just had 40, the Pacers might have a better plan for him. That I do not know. His assist line, though, is at 2.5. The odds are at minus 135, though, so the odds aren't great for a straight bet. He had five assists in game one, two assists in game two. Looking at his potential assists, he only had three potential assists. And it makes sense if you shot the ball as much as he did. So in terms of his assist prop, I'm happy to stay away from it. His rebound line's at 6.5, juice to the over, 132. Seven and five rebounds so far in this series. Rebound chances, 12 and nine. So 21 rebound chances overall. So that's 10.5 rebound chances per game. And you need him to get seven boards. Man, I think the under here at plus money is a good look, but not something that I'm willing to play because I think he gets real close to it. I've got to tell you. 
Um, for Jalen Brown, usually first quarter points is a good look for him. 6.5, I don't necessarily love, but check this out. In his last six games against Indiana, he's covered this first quarter point sign. It's a plus money play as well. He's covered it in six straight games against the Pacers, um, including games so far in this playoffs. He only got seven minutes in the first quarter of that last game and still managed to cash the over. So I'll take that down as a lean. The hit rate is great. We know that the Boston Celtics, they like to get uh, Jalen involved. Uh, Chris Tapps Porzingis, he's still out. Luke Cornett is a game-time decision. Um, Tyrese, obviously, a game-time decision as well. Uh, so that in mind as you go through your bets. Um, but yeah, the round of the first quarter, I can definitely back that in. 6.5, I'd be a bit hesitant, but there's no Chris Tapps, so he, he could see more opportunities there. So I don't mind that for Jalen Brown. Next up, let's go with Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday's been an absolute freak. Now, his first quarter assist prop has been banging as of late. Five straight games where he's covered over 1.5 assists in the first quarter. He's gotten three assists in both first quarters against the Pacers in this series. Uh, if we could just head-to-head -head numbers. He's played the Pacers seven times since he joined the Celtics, and he's only started covering it over his last three. Uh, but the rate so far in this playoffs is mightily appealing. Three assists in both first quarters against the Pacers. I know he's on the road now, but someone's got to pass the ball to Jalen Brown, right? So I don't hate that. So I'm going to add that to my lean. Who knows? We could. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to end up just taking all these straight bets as first quarter players. So we might even have a first quarter parlay. At least, you know, damage if we get screwed here. So I don't mind that for Drew Holiday. Points line. He's at 14.5. He's covered that in both games. 28 and 15 points for Drew Holiday. He's covered this in four out of his last five. Against the Pacers, five out of his last seven. So he's had a fair bit of success, and that's because they're leaving Drew Holiday wide open. So you can see his three-pointers made. Four from eight in the first game, three out of four in the last game. 14.5 uh, does feel about right to me, to be honest. One that I might be interested in is his three-point prop. Line set at exactly two. So the 1.5 is minus 230, which is not great. The 2.5 is at plus 150, and he's hit that in four straight games against the Pacers. So... Yeah, Drew Holiday, depending on what odds you can get for the over 1.5, I think that could be a good look. I'm just going to quickly have a look at my sports book to see what I'm getting. And if I find something I like right now, and I bet it right now, there's probably, it means that there's less work for me later on. So let's tap in. Let's take a look at this. All right, I'm having a look at bet 365. We're checking out threes made. Drew Holiday, too. yeah, his line here is at 2.5. Um, so the 2.5, it is a plus money play. He has hit this in four straight games. My concern is the volume. You can see in two of these games against Indiana, he took only three and four attempts. He just happened to shoot a wild percentage. So I'm not willing to take a bet on that, unfortunately. Um, how about his rebounds? 5.5 for Drew. He's covered this in five out of seven games against Indiana. Only had three rebounds in that last game. Nine rebound chances. Slightly below what his average rebound chances are against them. Um, over his last 10, he's cashed this in six of his last 10, averaging five. So, yeah, there's no lean for me here. Probably lean. Yeah, there's no lean for me in terms of his rebound prop. Um, so I'm just going to bet that. Let's take a look at his assist prop, 5.5 as well. Now, in his assists in this series, eight and 10 assists in the two games so far against Indiana, which is wild. 13 and 12 potential assists. If we look at head-to-head -head numbers, He's only cashed in three of his last seven against Indiana. So his two best games have been the two most recent games. His potential assist volume has been sky high. Line at 5.5. So he's looking at 13 and 12 potential assists for Drew Holiday. So if I... I'm just doing some math in my mind, so just give me a moment. All right, I just ran the numbers on Drew Holiday. In games where he gets between uh, 10, 13 potential assists, um, he hit this line of 5.5 in 58% of games, which is not super high. Um, he has gotten 12 and 13, but if I run it on where he's gotten 12, at least 12 potential assists, he's got a 100% hit rate covering this line. It's crazy. Those two potential assists, they drive this through the roof. So depending on what odds you can find Drew Holiday for assists, um, at 5.5 could be a good look. Um, it could be quite close, though. Last two games were at home. Um, on the road now, the paces have been pretty good at home. Um, I'm just getting the odds for myself to see what I can get for Drew Holiday. And it is juice to the gills. I'm getting it at about minus 132. So 
Um, fantasy players, I think the over and Drew Holiday assist could be a good look. As I did in my last video, um, I'll put um, when I put it in the pin comment, I'll let you know which ones I'd take for DFS and which ones I'd think are better for straight up based on the odds. So Drew Holiday over his assist, but only on the, on the DFS stuff. Let's take a look at Derek White now. All right, his point signs at 15.5 as well. He scored 15 and 23 points in this series. 13 and 15 shot attempts, which is pretty good. 38 and 53% from the field. So we started to see an improvement in the last game. The last game, clearly an over-delivery where he scores 23. He did make four three-pointers. So I'd be interested to see what his three-point line is. Um, if you didn't know, thanks to uh, Josh and your bets, I put $1,000 on Derek White to make three three-pointers in that last game. Thankfully, he cashed, but man... I was sweating bullets. I do not encourage anyone to do that. Um, but like a look at his head-to-head -head form against the Pacers, Derek White, he's covered this in six out of his last 10 games against them. Um, so I probably lean, yeah, look, I probably lean to the over here on Derek White. Um, purely don't see Jalen Brown scoring 40 again. I don't know whether Jason Tatum scores 40 either. So the Boston Celtics attack should be somewhat balanced and Derek White should be able to cover this 15.5. I'm not going to bet it. Um, I love it that much, but that's definitely the way that I'm leaning. Derek White assists. This was at 4.5 from the last two games. He killed it, nine and six assists in those games. It's now moved to 5.5, which he has covered in the last two. It's a plus money play, but his potential assist volumes are not high, 12 and eight. So he's averaging 10 potential assists per game, um, which is two potential assists lower than Drew Holiday's, but their line is the same at 5.5. So Drew Holiday has a higher potential assist numbers. That's why I lean to the over on that. Derek White has better odds if you take the exact same bet. And on the road, I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to bet the under, but uh, I don't feel any confidence in backing that over for Derek White. His rebound line's at 4.5. He had six and four in the two games, so he's averaging five rebounds a game. Eight and nine rebound chances. I feel like this, this line is exactly where it should be. Um, doesn't have the greatest form against Indiana either. So I'm going to look to pass on that. Looking at his three-point line, still at 2.5, minus 135, which is crazy. I'm just taking a look at uh, Derek. Man, to get three, believe it or not, to get for him to make three three-pointers, I'm getting better odds now for this game than I did in that last one. And I get that he is on the road as well. So I don't mind that. I think this would be a good play for your DFS guys, though. Minus 135, straight bet, probably not great. But for the DFS stuff, go crazy. I just want to check his uh, away games. See, now on the road against the Pacers, though, he's gone under in three straight. If we look at his last 10 road games, though, which is probably a more accurate representation because these are in the playoffs. Actually, last five road games, four of them are in the playoffs. Two, eight, three, and one for Derek Wyatt. Uh, the volume, been there for a few games. So yeah, it's into the over here for Derek White on his three-point prop. So I've taken note of that to share it with you all. Next up, we have uh, Al Horford. So Al Horford, his PRA went up to 21.5 in that last game, which is crazy. His point signs at 12.5. He scored 16 in the first game, only six in the most recent game. He, um, what do you take? Sorry, that's points plus assists. Let me look at points. 10.5 is the line. My apologies. 15 points, six assists in the last game. I mean, just in the last game. Um, took and six shot attempts as well, which is pretty crazy. Um, three pointers, took a lot of attempts in the first game. Only took one in the game after, which is pretty crazy. The vote leaned to the under here on Al Horford, but not something that I want to bet. His assist, 1.5. He's only averaging 0 0.5 assists in this series. His potential assist volumes aren't too bad, five and three. Um, they're just not making buckets when he passes, and his rebound line's at 7.5. Six and then 10 in that last game. He got 10 rebounds from 13 rebound chances. So I think the only way you could bet Al Horford is on points plus rebounds and assists. This is at 19.5. It was at 21.5 in the last game. Um, then in poor performance, now it's come back down to 19.5. And I'll probably lean to the under, but it's not something that I'm looking to bet here for Al Horford, so we'll pass on him. Um, and we have Peyton Pritchard. I don't think the other guys are worth really betting on. I think the other note on Al Horford is if um, Luke Cornett's not good to go, Xavier Tillman might get some time, but Al Horford could also get more time. Points for Peyton Pritchard, 7.5. So far in this series, he's scored 8 and 12. In this playoffs, he's been covering this line quite well. Uh, he's had nine points over his last 10 games, four straight games in the green for Peyton Pritchard. 
his minutes. He should get 19 to 20 minutes. He should take about five to six shots. He does shoot a very high percentage as a late, which is supporting and covering this line. Uh, the Lurie's two three-pointers made. That could be a good play. I'm assuming that's where his line's at. Yeah, the over Peyton Pritchard, 1.5 plus 140. So it's a plus money play. The problem is volume. He's not taking too many shots, which is my concern. Now, Boston are on the road, but they are seven-point favorites in this game. Um, deservingly so. So Peyton Pritchard is going to get his game time. I don't think this game should will be that close where Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum take every single shot. I think Peyton Pritchard could get his. Let's take a look at his road games just to see if that has a factor on him. So three out of his last 10 road games, he's covered this line in, which is not great. He's played four road games in the playoffs so far. He's covered this line in one of them. So you can see the volume's not very high. So that's my main concern. So I probably lean to the over and Peyton Pritchard three-pointers, but it's not something I even want to consider betting. Um, this is I love it. Very similar to his points. Um, lean to over, but I'm not going to bet that. Road games against Indiana, he's won from three. And then in the playoffs, four road games, he's covered this line once. Um, and his shot volume hasn't been very high. He's taken about four to five shots. So you really need him to shoot a high percentage in order to cover this. So yeah, for Pritchard, I'm going to have to pass on that. Pumping the brakes real quick on this one. If you haven't already and you're new to the channel, you have to subscribe. We are on the road to 8K. It was only last week where we hit 7,000 subscribers. We're almost at 7,500. So this shit's been blowing up throughout the playoffs. So if you haven't already subscribed, because I do this every single day, once the NBA is finished, we still have WNBA content, MLB content. I'll be doing these deep dives every day for the foreseeable future until I'm big enough to quit my nine to five. So help me get out of the hood. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, all that good stuff, and use those affiliate links down below because they also help me get out of the hood. Um, if you need a tool, I've already spoken about outlier. If you need some DFS apps, use Chalkboard, use Dabble. Sign up with the code DAFT and you get deposit matches for Chalkboard. Dabble will throw $10 in your account if you sign up with the code DAFT. So help your boy out. Check out those affiliate links. So let's get back to the preview. Let's go. All right. So we're jumping into these Indiana Pacers. Now, I don't know what the news is on Tyrese Halliburton. So I'm going to Google his ass real quick. Not Tyrese Gibson. Tyrese Halliburton is what I'm looking for. Now, what is the most recent news on Tyrese Halliburton? Let me see. Let me see. So he's questionable due to hamstring soreness. Makes sense for him not to play this game if it is a hamstring. So I'm going to make the assumption here that he, even if he does play, he's not going to play as many minutes. That's where my heart, that's where I'm going here. Um, even if he plays, he's probably not going to play two minutes, too many minutes. So his points props at 16.5. I'd lean to the under on that. Doesn't matter what the data says. My man has a suspect hamstring. If you think about OG Ananobi, didn't he only play five minutes when he came back in that game seven against the Pacers? He missed like three or four games with a hamstring injury, came back, and he could barely, barely keep going. So, yeah, I'd lean to the under on his points. His assist line's at 8.5 still. I'd lean to the under on that too. His rebounds are at 4.5. I'd lean to the under on that. What I'm going to do, his PRA is at 29.5. He had 38 in game one, and he was excellent. 25 points, 10 assists, and three boards. Then he had 10 points, four rebounds, eight assists, finished on 22 PRA in game two. Obviously, he didn't play that fourth quarter. Now, now he's got the injury. I'd take the under on his 29.5 PRA. Because if he doesn't play, you get your money back. If he does play and you get shut down early, then uh, you would bet. <laughs> and he does happen to play 30 minutes. I think there is still, because he's facing an injury, there is still a chance that he goes under. So um, it might be something that you can cash out on. I'll leave that up to you. But me personally, I'm looking to take the under in his PRA. So one of the main sports books that I use don't even have a Tyrese Halliburton PRA, which because, because they're a bit cautious and hesitant on whether he's going to play or not. But my friends at Bet365 do have Tyrese Halliburton at minus 29.5. So I'm going to go ahead and put two units on that right now. Um, and something that I can cash out on any time. And if he does play for a little bit, easy money. But if he gets pulled from the game, then it's money back for me. Um, what have I got for you? Actually, I've got to paste this into my leans just so you guys can see it as well. All right. Who else have we got? Let's get to get, go through Andrew Nemhard. 
So Nemhard's been very consistent. He's been pretty good. His points line, 12.5. He's covered this in five out of his last 10. So this line has moved up from where it used to be. He scored 12 and 16 points in the two games so far in this series. That last game, he scored 16 points, barely got a run in the fourth quarter, only played 26 minutes. Um, did 50% in both games, 10 and 12 attempts. Um, four pointers in each game. Didn't shoot too well from the three-point land in that last game. So I'd probably lean to the over here. What I want to see is just how he's performed at home. How does that see if that has a difference? All right, so in these playoffs, he's played six games at home, and he's covered this line in four out of the six games. What I'm actually interested to see is how does he play without Halley? So on the season, he's averaging 9.9 .9 points. Without Halley, he goes up to 12.45. Line set at 12.5 today. All right, makes sense. So he's covered this in six out of 11 games with Halley out on the lineup. So Nemhard, I'd probably lean to the over on his points, but I want to get through all of his props before I start jumping on him. His assist line's at 5.5. God damn. So this has already moved up. Um, I take his assists. I think it might have been yesterday. Probably it would have been last night. It would have been first thing this morning. Um, but Nemhard's assist line's moved to 5.5. It is a plus money play. I'm just checking to see what I got. Um, him at 4.5. So only moved up a little bit, really. Um, but this is 5.5 assists for Nemhard. In his last 10 games, he's covered this four out of the 10. Uh, all the games being in the playoffs. In this series, though, had seven assists in game one, five assists in game two. Um, at 5.5, I probably lean to the over, but I'm not telling you to bet it. If any of your daily fantasy apps do have the 4.5, though, I think that's still a good look for Nemhard. I don't mind that. Then we take a look at his rebounds, 2.5, 3 and 2 in these series, um, and minus 166. So that, ne that rebound play wouldn't be great for Nemhard. We got Spicy P. Let's take a look at him. So if we run with the theory that Tyrese Halliburton may play, and if he does play, he probably doesn't play too much. All right. Pascal Siakam's points lines at 22.5. He's scored 24 and 28 points so far in this series. He's been great. His shot attempts have been excellent. 23 in game one, where he played a lot more minutes. 13 from 17 in game two, but he only played 31 minutes because the coach sat all the starters in the fourth quarter. So he well and truly would have scored 30 plus points. 22.5, it makes a lot of sense to take the over, but we've seen this story before. He scored 30 plus points in the first two games against Milwaukee. Milwaukee made some adjustments and suddenly Pascal Siakam stopped scoring. Although the Boston Celtics don't necessarily have somebody built like Bobby Portis. They've got Jason Tatum, who plays a four. He's actually a three, but they play a small ball lineup the majority of the time. When Jason Tatum is out of the game, who comes on for Jason Tatum? Probably some scrubs, right? So they don't necessarily have someone to stop Pascal. He torches Al Horford. Uh, Tatum, best of he's probably the best person they have to defend him. He just hasn't done a great job defending him. And I think Jalen Brown's actually been picking him up. Either way, Pascal Siakam, there's no real defensive stopper out there for the Boston Celtics to slow down Pascal. So, yeah, probably to the over in his points prop. But at the same time, it's probably something I'm not going to bet. Um, purely Boston might send some traffic his way. I'm, I'm a bit cautious and a bit worried about that after two strong games. Surely they make an adjustment, right? What I might be interested in taking, though, is this assist. 3.5 assists for Pascal. He had seven in game one, and then he only had two in that last game. Potential assist volume, nine was his, is pretty much his ceiling. That's what he got in game one. He only had three in game two. Um, he averaged 5.2 potential assists. So in his last 10 games, that is. So I think the ceiling and the opportunities are definitely there for him to go over. If Halley's a little bit corrupt, then you're going to need Pascal, Nemhard, and TJ McConnell to do some more lifting to create more in the offense. So I don't hate the assist prop, so I probably have that as a lean as well. I can definitely see that happening. It's just not one of those players that I'm going to suggest to you to say, yes, take this. But put it this way. If Tyrese Halliburton just injured his hamstring and you had 100 opportunities to play this same bet in the same scenario, you would, I would suggest take Pascal Siakam every single time if Halliburton may not play or is injured in this scenario because I think he'll hit four assists 60 to 70% out of those 100 games. 
The problem is we only run into this scenario once. So I'm not suggesting that you bet this. I'm just giving you my thinking as to why I think it's a good play. Um, looking at his rebounds, though, 8.5 for Siakam. The line has moved up, believe it or not. It was at 7.5. He had 12. Then he only had five boards, but the line has gone up to 8.5. He only had nine rebound chances. So for him to get nine rebounds and cover this line in the last game, he had to get every single rebound that went his way. I don't know why it's at 8.5. I know Tyrus Halliburton's not there, but he's not an absolute monster on the boards either. So if anything, this rebound line confuses me. So it's not something that I'm willing to play. So I'm going to have to pass on that. The Siakam assists and the points are a lean. You could look at points plus assists, really. Um, but it's wild. I don't know what's going on there with his rebounds. Next up is Miles Turner. Now I'm questioning, do I attack Miles Turner under steals and blocks again? So I've taken him in both games so far in this series. Let's talk about his points, and then we can get to that. Point, 16.5 for Turner, 23 in game one, eight points in game two. His minutes were down. His field goal attempts were down. His percentages were down. So a real outlier of a game. He did shoot two from four from downtown, though, which is pretty wild. I think his three-point line would still be at 1.5. His points prop, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you whether to take the over or not. He's de There's definitely room for him to be better, take more attempts, get more minutes. I just don't know if he will. This is a home game after all, but he has had some stinkers at home. Um, so, yeah, I've got no lean there on the Miles Turner points prop. The three-point prop's a little bit easier, the 1.5. I'd probably lean to the over is if as long as he's taking more than four attempts. Uh, if we look at his last, Let's look at his last 10 home games. And at home, excellent. Eight out of his last 10 games, he's got over. Now, the line's at minus 135. I mean, not minus 135, though. So probably not a great bet for like to bet as a single. If you're looking at parlays or if you're playing the fantasy stuff, then Miles Turner over his three point prop. I don't mind that. I'm just checking my sports book now to see what type of odds I can get for him. <laughs> Woo! Gosh, I'm getting sneezy up in here. All right, Miles Turner, where you at? Yeah, the odd the odds for Miles Turner to go over his three point prop is not great. But what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab two of, you could say, my favorite leans from the DFS section, and I'm going to parlay those suckers together. Miles Turner, I think he's going to be one of them. Um, but let's keep moving on. He's Ryan. Where's that at? 7.5, uh, 10 in game one, four in game two. Obviously, his minutes were down, so rebound chances would be down as well. Historically, the unders hit in 60% of his games this year for Miles Turner, so I'd have to lean that way. I get that he's at home, uh, and he did cover in the two in two home games against the Knicks in that last series, though. But I'd still lean to the under, but not something that I'm willing to bet. Uh, let's look at his steals and blocks. Let's get straight to that. If this still plus money, I'll probably take it. Oh, damn. Steals and blocks, 2.5. Oh, actually, was it just blocks? I think it might have just been blocks. Yep. It is blocks. All right. So the under 1.5 blocks for Miles Turner is at minus 110. Um, actually, no, it's not plus money. I'm probably still going to take it. You know why? Because if, if Miles Turner is going to block anyone, it's going to be Luke Cornett, and he's probably not going to play. Other than that, he ain't blocking nobody. He can also find himself in foul trouble, this boy. Um, I think Isaiah Jackson or whatever his name is off the bench, he's probably more likely to cover his block line than Miles Turner in this type of series. The Boston Celtics, a lot of three-point shooting, and when they do attack the rack, they're mil milking fouls and stuff like that. So, yeah, Miles Turner under his blocks. It is at minus 110, but for those odds, I still don't mind them. So I might run that one back for Miles Turner. Who else we got on this? We got Aaron Neesmith. A. Smith points line at 11.5, 14 in game one, nine points in game two. Uh, he's a player who didn't play in the fourth quarter, but well and truly could have covered his points line if he had more time. He was three from seven from the field, one from three from deep. He made two free throws. So I've got no lean on his points prop, nothing at all. His assists at 1.5. He had one assist in both games this series. His rebound line at 4.5. So his rebound chances aren't very high. So he's on there to play defense, really. I've got no particular read on him getting some buckets. He's bench boys. So interestingly enough, there's no Obi Toppin on the board. Hang on. Let me refresh this page real quick. Maybe we can find some Obi Toppin. 
All right, page refresh and no OB Toppin lines available. So let's get to TJ McConnell. Surprise that TJ McConnell's lines are available if um, Tyrese is questionable. So TJ's points line at 12.5. So yeah, I think this is already factoring Halliburton not playing. 12.5, it was at 10.5 in the last game and he only scored nine points. I get that he's back at home, but home in a way, he plays the same amount of minutes, takes the same amount of shots. So I think this line is really factoring Halliburton not playing. Um, what did he do here? Got 17 minutes in that last game, took 10 shots, shot 40% from the field, and he made a three-pointer, believe it or not. So I'm not overly attached to that. His assist line is at 6.5. He had four and three assists in the last two games. So, yeah, most factoring out life without Halley here. Let's look at the season without Halley to see what TJ McConnell's done. So he averages 7.25 assists against, uh, against 12 games this season without Tyrese Halliburton. Um, one against Boston this season, we know Halliburton. Boston won that game by 50. Um, TJ for 28 minutes, though. 14 potential assists, finishing with five. So, yeah, I'm not going to be betting on TJ. His numbers are already jacked all the way up. Um, so I'm not clear whether he's going to get the run that I need him to get on. So a quick recap on what I have so far. Um, Tatum under three-pointers. Tatum under his assists. Jalen Brown over his first quarter points. Drew Holiday over his first quarter assists. Tyrese Halliburton under his PRA, if he plays. Pascal Siakam over his points, over his assists. We could look at his points plus assists, maybe. And Miles Turner under his blocks. So they're the ones I have in my straight bets. And if we look at the leans for DFS, I've got Holiday over his assists, Derek White over his three-pointers, Miles Turner over his three-pointers as well. Um Look, I was surprised the amount of people who typed in gold chain in yesterday's video to let me know you got to this point. I appreciate I appreciate you. Far out, right, I can't speak. I appreciate you. That was actually pretty cool. So today's code word, if you made it up to this far, I want you to put the word vape lord. V-A-P-E-L-O-R-D. Vape Lord in the comment section right now if you made it this far. Because for those of you who did not know, I am a vape lord. And I'm a vape lord because I actually gave up smoking cigarettes probably about eight years ago when vapes first came to town. The problem with vapes is they're addictive as fuck. They are worse than cigarettes. So I'm still on them. So type in vape lord in the comment section below. I appreciate you if you do. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Up to the channel cause your boy's getting busy Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney We've got the free picks and the juice on the daily It's all free, you don't even have to pay me